What up guys, Phantom here, back with episode 13 of my F1 2019 career mode here as we are going to the Hungara Ring for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Good afternoon race fans and here we are again for qualifying at the Hungaro Ring. Who will have tuned the perfect setup for their car? We'll find out soon. The competition is certainly heating up as we head into today's qualifying. Some impressive times showing up during the previous practice sessions. Anthony Davidson, do you think we can expect a similar level of skill to be showcased during today's qualifier? Well, I certainly hope so. The competition here is extremely tight and I think we might see some very close times today. Remember, practice isn't just about fastest lap times though. It's about optimization, it's about ratifying your decisions. No one's going to be sweating small mistakes here and there, but in qualifying that all changes. You need to nail that perfect lap or face the consequences. And believe me, that's a lot of pressure. As we enter Q1 here, as we go through the last corner of the lap, to start our flying lap. I absolutely hate this last corner as you have to wait so long to pick up the throttle as we start our flying lap down to turn one here. This is the shortest, I think this is joint, sh uh, shortest, longest straight of a circuit. It's the longest straight on the track and I think it's the shortest when it's on the F1 calendar at like 800 meters I think it is. As we come around to the final corner here, come to make our flying lap will be P13 only and P14 by the end of the session so we're in real danger of not actually getting through to Q2 which our car is mainly based our car upgrades and performance we are the best engine so, uh, engine on the grid and right there I think that's one of the Williams as I think that's Russell basically put us off and made us go wide as we had Albon there in front of us uh, kind of taking a little bit of dirty air as he finally got out of the way as we come around to the final corner as we go down the straight as Kvyat's right in front of us as we're not going to improve with 30 seconds left but we are going to get through to Q1 as Kubica, Russell, Stroll, Albon, and Kvyat are knocked out of Q1 as we start Q2 here, it actually was supposed to rain during this session, so we had to get our flying lap in as quick as possible before it started to rain. And we come across the line to start our flying lap here down this turn one here. As we break right after the 100 meter board, and you actually want to attack the last half of the apex as we missed it completely. But as we're coming through the third sector here, it's actually starting to sprinkle. So basically, whoever puts in their quickest lap at this moment will be moving on to Q3. As we are Q4, uh, P4, but at the end of the session, we are going to barely make it in as we are P10 and we beat out Jovanaski. As we move on to Q3 here, as we are making our only flying lap of the session with 2.30 left to go as we come across the line to start our flying lap as we go down this hill here it goes to flat again and then lock up on the right front there trying to get it to turn in as we go through the second to last corner here as we swing out wide to try to get a good entry to the last corner here so we try to power off, we go a tiny bit wide, not much. We come across, we're going to be P9, but end up being last, well, P10, we'd be last in Q3 here, as we were the worst out of the midfielders, and we will move on to the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's always wonderful to come back to the lively Hungaro Ring, a popular destination this, nice and close to the beautiful city of Budapest, with some exciting racing to boot. Who can forget Michael Schumacher pushing his old teammate Rubens Barrichello up towards the pit wall in 2010, or those great races of 2014 and 2015 as well. Located 12 miles northeast of the Hungarian capital Budapest, the 14 corners of the Hungaro Ring are steeped in history and prestige. 
Overtaking has always been difficult on this technical 2.7 mile circuit, but the last few years in particular have turned up some exceptional races. Let's hope we're in for another one here today. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Lucas Faber and Raikkonen, Hülkenberg, Ricardo, a Haas and Antonio Giovinazzi, Hamilton, Rojan, Lando Norris and Butler, Perez, Kvyat, Alexander Albon and Lance Stroll, Russell and Robert Kubica takes the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. As we sit here on the grid P9 after Lewis Hamilton's penalty and five lights are out and we get a lot of wheel spin as Hamilton looks like he's gaining some speed but we want to try to get the inside here for the right hander here and we're a little bit tentative as Ricardo basically just pretended we weren't there as we actually lost a place to Hamilton and so we're now bound to P10 here. As we're coming through turn two here, as we go to turn three, the right hander, they're gonna bunch up a little bit and we're gonna see if we can get a run on Ricardo here down to the inside. As we kinda outbreaked him for a second and then we kinda didn't want to get squeezed off there because the AI are known to do that a lot. As we come here on to the front stretch here for lap two, as Jovanatsky is gonna attack us, we are actually down on power, our engine flare is around 50% and we will start from the back of Hungary, uh, Hungary. and we'll start at the back of Belgium because we're going to replace all the units as Jovanaski is going around the outside we kind of lock up a little bit but with a worn engine we are not going to get the drive off as he kind of broke a little bit there is that's going to give us a little bit of run but pulls away and we're just going to pull it and we just got spun by our teammate Grosjean what are you doing he absolutely just took us out took us out and then in the process we lost our entire front wing and so we have to limp all the way around as you can see from his point of view it's coming up the hill and he just a gap that was never going to be there just never was going to be there and he didn't even get his tire up there his front wing spun me out so uh, Grosjean doing Grosjean things as you see back here as you see the crash up there Butler lost a big part of his wing and so we're nursing it all the way back here and we are dead last probably by 20 seconds 25 seconds because you know we were the tight twisty section is really at the back end of the circuit so we had to go all the way through there without a front wing which was a pain and then it's going to take even longer to replace and it took eight and a quarter seconds to get the pit stop done and we are dead last by like 45 seconds at this point and so we could not recover that and Vettel has won the Grand Prix in Hungary as we come through the last couple of corners as we come back through a disappointing 19th position while our competitor gain on us and Hamilton actually gets on the podium okay we're all a bit gutted with that result but let's work hard and we'll get it together for the next race Ferrari have really pulled it out of the bag today it's a great win Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint. 
over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. Well, the gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Well, for me, it's got to be Lewis Hamilton. The multiple world champion may be the boring choice at this point, but you can't argue that he's a driver deserving of his reputation. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari continued to extend the gap at the top of the table. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next.